I'm Howard Lerner. I'm the Executive Director of the Environmental Law and Policy Center. I'm here this morning with our friend George Crafty. George is an expert on energy storage and is a distinguished fellow at Argonne National Lab. And we're going to ask George three questions about energy storage. The first, George, and it's a softball. Why do batteries and energy storage matter? How do they work? How do they make a difference? So batteries allow you to do one very simple thing, and that is transfer energy in time. You can charge the battery at one point and discharge it at another point. This is critical for things like transportation, electric vehicles, you charge at home, or maybe when you're uh, out at the drugstore or you're eating lunch at a restaurant, uh, and then you drive away, and the charge that you picked up while you were eating lunch takes you for the rest of the day. That lets you use electricity instead of fossil fuels for transportation, which is a huge environmental benefit, but also an energy benefit. It turns out that electric vehicles are much more efficient, about a factor of four, than gasoline uh, engine cars. The second application, the grid. We build the grid in a just-in-time basis, so we have to balance exactly the energy we produce with the energy we use uh, on a second-to-second -second basis. That means you have to build the grid for the peak demand. That peak demand is about 40% higher than the average demand, and that means you're building 40% more infrastructure than you need. So there are lots of ways, with, especially with the advent of renewables, wind and solar, which are variable in time, that energy storage can uh, dramatically accelerate their integration into the grid. So how's this a game changer? We say sometimes that solar energy plus battery and other storage is a game changer for the electricity system. With your work at Argonne, how does that piece together? So one of the very interesting things that's happened in the last six months, if you follow power purchase agreements, in Nevada and Arizona, the combination of solar plus storage can now provide power at less than three cents a kilowatt hour. And that is certainly a game changer. It's cheaper than almost everything else in the electricity system, including coal, natural gas, uh, which means that ultimately, if this trend continues, fossil fuels economically will be on the way out for no other reason. And that is a big change from, from the way things were. You know, that three cent point is absolutely key. So for example, the Clinton nuclear plant yes. in Western Illinois is about 3.2 cents a kilowatt hour for operating. Coal plants are in the four to five and sometimes even higher cents range. So you're right, if you get that three cents and below, solar plus storage is a game changer at rocks. So what should groups like ELPC be doing in terms of our advocacy a policy that can make a difference in terms of seizing the technical, technological opportunities that, that you're developing at Argonne? That is a huge and wonderful question, Howard. Thank you for asking that. Uh, there are lots of things that can be done. First of all, I think there uh, is a huge need, especially at this moment, to stress the importance of climate change. We seem to be losing sight of it in this country to a certain extent. Although cities and states are stepping up to the plate and making a huge difference in, uh, in advocating uh, getting off fossil fuels and reducing carbon uh, dioxide emissions, that will never go away. I think that one is one of the most important things that we can do. But there are other things that make the electricity se sector and the transportation sector especially amenable to change. And I think batteries have a lot to do with both. So as we said, uh, wind and solar, integrate them on the grid. You can do that now more cheaply than almost any other, uh, certainly other fossil fuels. Uh, that should be stressed and that R&D effort should be continued so that the price can continue to come down. Uh, I think ultimately that, although it won't solve all the carbon emission problems, it can solve about two thirds of them. And that is a huge step forward. Oh, and that's where policy makes a difference. So thank you to George Crabtree for all you're doing with your colleagues at Argon to accelerate battery and other energy storage. ELPCs, three questions with the experts, George Crabtree, Argon National Lab.